Hi, my name is Andy Cohan. I'm a technology architect with Avalon Consulting LLC, and today I'm going to show you one way you might integrate OneOps with Jenkins and Nexus for a typical build pipeline. Uh, before we get started, let's explain why you have a Jenkins build pipeline that uh, a lot in a lot of shops will create some sort of result, uh, an artifact. Uh, we're going to use a, a Maven produced Nexus artifact and repository for this example. Um, but there are lots of options for all of this stuff. Um, after our artifact is deployed, we're going to have another job. Um, well, it's typical to have another job which then deploys some artifact as part of some uh, larger suite of installations to go test something or to go run something. You may want to use OneOps to centrally manage all of your virtualized compute, including your test platforms. Um, and so what you might want to do is have Jenkins kick off some changes to OneOps to redeploy it so that then your test suite could hit a, a, an updated instance. Uh, one great thing about OneOps is it only deploys the things that uh, have changed. Anyway, um, so this is what we're going to show today is the integration of OneOps with Jenkins. So you're going to see a lot of them. Um, what we're going to deploy is just some sample artifact. Um, here we have a git repo with a palm in it. This palm oops, is for a sample artifact and it's got um, some dummy files in it. An index.html, the some resource file that we'll edit later. Um, the version in the palm is currently for snapshot. Uh, I'm going to change that to five snapshot. Um, which you won't see existing anywhere. And let's commit that change. And we'll, we'll push it up to GitHub. So this artifact is created by Maven, a Maven build, which is easy to integrate with Jenkins, of course. So there's our jar. See it has our resources in there. So now let's go to OneOps and create a new assembly. Now before we do that, uh, let me explain. I've already set up my cloud. So my organization is just AFC. My cloud is at is AWS, which is hosted there. And I've defined four services for this cloud that I know are required by the assembly that I'm getting ready to do. Um, see the last video for some explanation around, uh, you know, which services you might need. Uh, anyway, in this in this cloud, well, I've got some compute and DNS defined, plus GDNS and this Apache mirror. Um, the the uh, we won't be using that mirror, but we got to define it as part of our cloud in order for to do our deployment. So let's create an assembly. Uh, we're going to use a uh, simple custom assembly for this video. We're going to call this Video Assembly 3 because I have been working on this several times. Just to name an email address to define the assembly. It's hard to imagine going through and uh, doing all of this in one pass. Uh, I'm going to get as close as I can but uh, definitely have made many mistakes in getting to this point. Um, so we'll just call this custom platform and the key here is to choose the right platform. Um, if OneOps, you know, if you're deploying any one of these things that OneOps already knows how to do, by all means use that. Um, but this custom uh, uh, pack, this custom platform is what I'm demonstrating today just so uh, you can see how if nothing that you need to do, if it doesn't fit with anything that, that already exists, it's fairly easy to integrate uh, your, your customized artifacts in here. So here's the default um, platform for a custom build. Um, we're going to do two things to it to make it uh, uh, useful and uh, testable. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a user for myself. Um, out at the compute node that is going to be created by OneOps. I'm going to give myself sudo. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a key, basically just uh, uh, paste a public key in here. So uh, this needs to match with what I'm going to use via SSH later. So let me go copy and paste a public key. 
So now I've got a user in my design for the platform, for the assembly, I should say. So now you can see the user added to our design. Um, the, and then finally, the most important part, uh, to our custom platform, we will add an artifact. This is the sensitive part about this setup. Um, we'll name this uh, my custom artifact. Uh, and now we're going to define the coordinates of where to go get it. Um, that is, from our diagram, we're going to tell it where this Nexus repository is and how to how to navigate there. So um, our Nexus repository timed out there. Let's make sure we can read this. Yep. Nope. That's all right. So ABT snapshots is the repository that we're talking about. And as you can see here, I've got up two, three, and four snapshot, but not the five that I created before. So this artifact is not yet deployed, uh, but that's okay. What we're going to do is go into OneOps and define it. And let Notice, uh, at least for the way uh, I'm, you know, I address the default Nexus setup is with the slash Nexus prefix. We're going to specify that here and here in order to get the right incantation for uh, uh, OneOps to find our artifact from Nexus. The repository name is this name right here, ABT Snapshots, which is where the Maven build that you'll see later will upload the uh, artifact. We, don't need it. we do not need any authentication for this part because we're just downloading. The identifier here is the full group ID, artifact ID, instinction, extension. Of, I will copy paste a group ID, artifact ID, and in this case, extension, which is jar. The version, I'm going to say five snapshot. leave a checksum blank for now. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, and as I said, the path needs to match, at least in my case, up there and here. The install directory can be anywhere. We'll leave that blank. Um, we'll, we'll deploy this as OO admin. We could also deploy it as the user we created before. Everything else can be left as defaults for us. Now we can commit the design. And then we'll transition our assembly, creating an environment for it to go run in. We'll just call this environment test. Put it in debug mode. And choose our cloud. Now that we have an environment, let's commit this and deploy it. So there's the full deployment plan. Notice it will not. We will not have our user fully created until after this artifact um, exists, um, which is really not the dependency, at least as we specified it. Um, but so we will wait till we get a successful deployment before logging in. Now let's kick this off. This, some of this stuff can take a while. Um, the comp compute setup. Uh, <clears throat> so while we'll get that started, I'll show you some other pieces of the integration. like to just watch make sure it gets started successfully I am tailing the inductor log over here to watch the deployments happen if I need to see the log files I usually just make sure there's some activity I don't stay glued to it so 
All right, so now let's go back to our Maven build. Uh, we saw how to build this software here. Uh, I think, did I push it? Uh, I can't hurt. So here I have, well, let's, let's uh, real quick, let's look at Amazon. So here is the, it said video assembly three is the assembly we just defined. Here's a pending Amazon image or Amazon instance uh, spinning up. So that's consistent with this right here. We got some keys. We got the first part of Amazon's stuff created. So uh, this compute setup can take a while. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go to Jenkins. I've got this existing one. We'll make a new build. Build video three. We'll make this a Maven project. Um, so first we'll define where to get the source code. We can get this out of GitHub right here. Oops. We don't need authentication. Um, we won't worry about the trigger for now because there's. Uh, we're just going to do this manually. Um, our build, we'll say, is uh, clean deploy, not install, so that uh, a successful build of this project will deploy to Nexus. For now, let's put a placeholder as a post step. We'll execute a shell. Uh, talk to one ops. We'll save that. Let's see if we can build the build and deploy the artifact. Here's that same build under Jenkins, of course. See, it's building five snapshot. You must correct. I can't tell you what this. That's a new one. I don't think it matters. Our build worked. Yeah. So if we go check Nexus, whereas five dot snapshot did not exist before. We refresh. Now it does exist. So let's find out where our deployment is. We're still doing the compute. So we've got our artifact uh, defined up in Nexus even before the deployment has been attempted. Uh, so I'm just going to let that succeed. Uh, we'll, we'll make some changes. Uh, on the next deployment that will demonstrate clearly that things were successfully deployed. And we're going to pause here and let this compute finish out. I'll be back as soon as we have a, a build success or failure. Okay, <clears throat> so this build has completely succeeded. Uh, I just want to say if you look at the logs for our artifact uh, which I was watching as the build progressed. Um, there was about five to ten seconds delay perhaps, but this was very useful. You could actually see uh, everything uh, happening here. So um, we, as you can see, here is our Amazon image running at AWS um, that, the, that OneOps created. I'm going to take that host name and go out to a shell and log in as the user we defined as part of our OneOps assembly. Post the host name. Uh, this is the private key of the public one that I pasted in earlier when I defined the user. So uh, if we look at slash releases, this is the default place to deploy this stuff. You'll see our five snapshot release and there in fact ours are uh, index.html and our some resource markdown file there um, notice that file matches this file right here okay so now let's finish the Jenkins setup 
Go back to our Jenkins job. Right here we want to talk to one ops. Um, what we're going to do is update any of the fields. Um, let's put this deployment to bed. That worked. If we go back to our design for a second. Our custom platform. My custom artifact. These fields that you see as def defining the artifact itself are uh, the main pieces of information we need to carry between Jenkins and OneOps for the integration. So going back to Jenkins, we're going to have this job kick off uh, a OneOps deployment. Um, in order to make this uh, testable, let's make a change. Change for six snapshot. Uh, let's leave actually let's leave the version. Uh, we'll say change number one for five snapshot. And then let's go out there. Uh, we'll just do it from Vim. I'm gonna commit this. Okay, so uh, we'll go back and push that later. Um, but in our script, oops, what we're going to do, I'll show it to you here. Um, uh, we're going to add this shell script into our Jenkins job. Uh, the first thing it does is calculate a checksum on the artifact jar. Then later on, what we're going to do is set the checksum, which is the same piece of information that you see uh, in the OneOps artifact definition. So by calculating a checksum off the generated jar, as soon as the build is done, we'll use that to update OneOps. Uh, we're going to find some environment variables that I will have to change here um, to uh, log in and uh, Tell what tell OneOps what we want to do using the OneOps command line uh, interface. So let me just copy this script over to Jenkins. Get some room here. You just have to run this within the Ruby shell uh, as this um, to make sure that we've got all the libraries. And, in the path that, that we need. Okay, so unless the HCP has changed my IP address, this is the location of the OneOp server. Uh, the org is just is just AFC. That's still the same. The assembly is not my second assembly. The assembly is video assembly three. The environment, I believe, was lowercase test. Let me make sure it won't work if that's not right. Lowercase test. The platform. It's called custom platform. Not my custom platform. And my artifact is my custom artifact. You can see I'm very creative with my names. Um, right here, this is going to log into the server. Um, there are many ways that you might uh, handle these credentials. Uh, this, for the sake of demonstration, I've just kept it insecure and right here, as this is all just running on my laptop. Here, I'm going to pause the video and uh, because there's an error that you're about to see get fixed as soon as I resume. Uh, the video, but I want to draw your attention to what this script is doing. Uh, the OneOps command line interface provides some of the same transactions, if not all, that you use when you're in the GUI executing these steps manually, including setting a checksum on the artifact that we created, committing that design, 
pulling that design into the transition, committing the release, and then executing the deployment, which causes the actual deployment out of our cloud. There's the build running. That looks better. Okay, so um, what you see here is the running of the OneOps command line interface uh, to tell OneOps to update the checksum and redeploy. If we go look at our artifact, we should see the new checksum value. And now if we go out to our node, we may catch, I think the inductor might have beat us to it. Um, let's calculate our own the uh, the actual jar file comes down to slash artifact deploys. So you can see that the checksum that was calculated uh, in our Jenkins job is the same one that is now out at Amazon. So every time we run this build from now on we will redeploy just the changed elements, whatever happens to have changed in the OneOps assembly. So again, this has been an example of how to integrate OneOps with Jenkins. This was, of course, not the only way to do it, perhaps not even the right or recommended way to do it, but it should, uh, you should get a feel for the basic mechanics of integrating these components. I hope you enjoyed it.